series of tapes, Psychology versus Theology, were recorded from classes given this year by the Grand Master, Dr. Malachi Z. York, known to us as Naya Malachi Zodak El, our own Pharaoh, Amanubi Ra'akata. These tapes were released in part so that you may listen and learn the profound facts as taught by the man of this hour. And now, listen to the dynamic teachings of the Grand Master, Naya Malachi Zodak El. Here with the Native American or like the Native American influence. Let me get that straight. Okay, let's go as box as America. And let's go at it as South America, straight on down to Tripoli, and then out of the river. Correct? Let's call this Africa. Okay? And America. Women? Okay. Let's call this Israel. Call that Saudi Arabia. And let's go straight over this. Two rivers, Persian Gulf. Then it goes down like this, here, Caucasus Mountain. You got that? Mm-hmm. Right. So we move from the tip of California over this way, we have what's referred to as the Pacific Ocean. Right? Yeah. Over here, we have the Atlantic Ocean. And over here, we have the Indian Ocean. Got it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Over here is China. China is directly across from California. A short journey. However, if you are going to leave the United States to go to the Far East, as they call it, they will make you fly from over here in America, New York, Kennedy Airport, or one of the international airports, all the way across to Europe, port in a European country, and then fly over port to another European country, and then fly over to the Far East, and then I'll let you fly the space for us. All right? Oh, yeah. So, what happened is, the people who on this part of the land <coughs> called America. This other part was called a uh, master. Right? This is called at land. Got that? Yes. This was called, South America was called a Mexican. And all the out of the for all the part of it, straight down was called a Yucatan. This is the You understand? This land was called Sudan or Shoda. You understand that? This, this, the Red Sea or Reed Sea did not exist. And this was all one thing. Later because it's known as the land of Sheba or Cush. Straight up to the Persian Gulf. <coughs> with me? Okay. So far. Okay. <coughs> now, the indigenous people of Atlantis were you. All that. The Amexum Late bread what later became known as Mexico. They were your Mayan and your Zoo Aztec. All of these people were dark black skin, big lips, big nose, and nappy, kinky hair. Not straight, not curly. Right, that's it. All right, back then. This was all together the Greeks and the Mithraimites or Chemites of the word Ham referred to that as a land in the West in the book called Coming Forth by Day, the Inquisition Book of the Dead, which I have finished translating as a whole and don't have that in a hard drive. <coughs> it's finished. These people spoke about the great land across that small sea at one point, and then up to and then they said through the bushes, there's a great land with great kings. Talking about yes, yeah, Atlantis. It was Plato the first there because of the Atlantic Ocean. Mm-hmm. All right? The Bermuda Triangle was right in the center. When you push all these pieces back, they all fit in perfectly, and then you leave the Bermuda Triangle open in the middle. Mm-hmm. That was our power source. It's the only part of Atlantis that went underwater. The, mm-hmm. the power source was the demon the Luciferian trunk. Mm-hmm. And now they're trying to activate them with the generators, and they got the sounds off the coast. Anyway, so the Jericho occupied this side of the land. 
Huh? Right? Okay. 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 No, they were Peru who came here to Earth with an extra chromosome, a 47 chromosome. You follow that? And they mixed in with the original uh, Chen dynasty, which when you look up, you will find also look like black skin, woolly haired people, the indigenous people of the planet Earth. These two mixed in with these people and produced your Chinese people. Right? They have a larger brain. Because the two have a larger brain. They have the appearance of Down syndrome because mongoloidism is a result of a 47 chromosome. And you see the Chinese eyes and mongoloid children's eyes are the exact same. Don't ask me about the curse of Edom that comes with the Japanese and the Koreans. And here you want it. I know you're going, what about because of Edom? It's a different story. You back further, so many will get four about them with you. You with me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Eventually, the power of the Mongolians caused the terror in China to go beneath the ground. In China, they have underground tunnels that are fantastic. Mm-hmm. And if you go to Disney World, and you go into Epcot, and go into China, there's a big... Uh, temple, the original Chinese temple, you go in there and they show you a round screen and the man who's not ready to from China takes you in the underground tunnel right there and he shows them to you. This is where the Tiru entered and went underground and left the Chen dynasty ruled, which became one of the first dynasties of all time. Do me some research if you don't know. Got me? They made shit. And they sailed eastward, following the tide flow, and came into California and brought in with them their Jay Topaz and their dragon that they, the, the dragon beast from their own star constellation, which was with the Andromeda people. You understand? Same being. They came in and brought that to the shores of California. That's why you notice that the Native Americans have what they call the magic sand mm-hmm. Mag- uh, medicine they make. And they find new sand of different color and they draw these little magic um, talismans. And the same thing the Chinese do. Mm-hmm. The dragon dances, the feather, the same thing. The mask, the coloring of the faces. The, the, the stone, the, the, the fine uh, ivory work, the jade work, the topaz, all of this is the exact same mm-hmm. culture. Mm-hmm. Now, the hero makes it in with them, <coughs> having no hair, because their, their chemistry is their chemical uh, stuff is different, produce hollow hair. Mm-hmm. Each strand of hair is hollow, something not of this earth. The ball. All Chinese people aspire to curl their hair. The reason why they wear that straight hairstyle is because regardless of what they do, they can't curl their hair. They can put it in rolling and it will fall out because their hair is hollow. Are you with me? When these people sailed over to this country, California, they encountered the indigenous people of this land. By the time they came here now, they were no longer black or dark-skinned Morsi by, by nationality with woolly hair, but they were a yellowish cream color with straight hair and mongoloid or slanted eyes. Mm-hmm. A larger brain, you follow that? Mm-hmm. And a more condensed body as the as people of, of, of the, the Chen dynasty were short. Men. Mm-hmm. <coughs> yeah, that goes to another story, right? Mm-hmm. All right. They came here. They sailed back and forth, bringing their culture. Finally, one of them named Ho Shen sailed over here on an expedition to this new land. Meanwhile, other stuff is going on over here. On the other side, I ain't even talking about it. <laughs> when he got here, he encountered the all They were dying out. 
because they were well, not enough for them to sail there to survive, and their ship crashed and they couldn't get back across. But what they did is the Almack allowed them to marry their daughters to produce their seed. The mixing in with their daughters um, produced what's called the Native American today. And the Native American today also has hollow hair like the Chinese. And if you look at the Native American, they range from black or African looking all the way to Oriental looking. Some Mexicans look just like the Chinese. Now, then you have another group of Native Americans that look like East Indians. Like the, some of the Seminoles in Florida. Yes, because later on, East Indians crossed all the way up to the Barren Strait, came down and mixed in with Native Americans producing your Eskimos, who are a little darker in complexion. And then they kept on moving down and stuff broke off into tribe by incident, mispeared, meaning my nose is here. Seminole, meaning to run away. Creek, meaning we traveled the route of the creek. Blackfoot, man, I walked through the black swamps of the Carolinas. They became named by incident because they all were of the same family. Now they have various shades, various uh, features, and some of their heads were less uh, were less than hollow, some were flat, some were curled, and some you have what's called your Native Americans. They're not the original people of this land. They met the people when they got here who were you, more, all that. The original people here. On the other side, you'll find that back then, Africa, South America, all the way to, to Chile was all one land that we lived on. And the people over there in Europe referred to it as Atlantis, that great place. Egypt was inclusive in it. You understand that? The Greeks today will tell you we got all our knowledge from Africa. If they don't tell you that, then ask them why was the greatest library in the world in Iskandaria, the Arabic word for Alexandria, and not in Athens? Why do you have your greatest library in Egypt, up near the Mediterranean Sea, and not in your own country? Because all of the knowledge is the Greeks and their philosophers got, they got it from Moors who educated them, who were called Chemites. Chemites is nothing but a derivative of Ham, which takes it back to Mitzrayim, which takes it back to Noah, which takes it back to the tigris Euphrates area. Mesopotamia, Chaldea, Iraq, which now they call Iraq, which is ancient Babylon. The Aryan, on the other hand, the word Aryan has nothing whatsoever to do with Caucasian. The word Aryan is the word Iran. And this goes back to ancient Hindu, the original black man, the Asiatic black man, because he was outside of our land. And when you got outside of our land, you would form what we call the Orient, where the sun rose, because we were in the west. So we looked over and we saw a rock come over the east. So the word Asia, the Arabic word, where they get the word Asia, means Orient, which if you look up means where the sun rises. Right. So they, those people who lived on that side, out of our land, when Nod began, the land of Nod and Bible, they were called Asiatic. So you had Asiatic black men from India, the Asiatic, which are the Orientals, and then the Caucasian Asiatic, which are the Caucasian. Mm -hmm. <coughs> when you ask the Caucasian, what is the white race, he can't tell you. He uses the word white race in order to engulf many people's success to make himself appear to have done something over this period of 6,000 years. When in actuality, when you isolate them by name and put them in the genes, you'll find they've done nothing. 
So when you meet one of them and they say, uh, we Europeans, you say, we Europeans, what country are you from? And they say, French. They say, well, the British don't like the French. So the contributions of Britain has nothing to do with the contributions of the French. And the Germans don't like the British or the French. And the Irish don't like the British, the German, or the French. So let's break you back down into individual tribes and families. And then let's see what you have contributed. And the answer is, as Hitler would say, zilch. <laughs> Nothing. You understand? So Hitler the Coop set out to unify all of Europe so that they can say we as a, a white race, we did this and we did that. But the other part of the Caucasian family was not in agreement with Hitler's principles of the New World Order, opposed him and cut off their own nose despite their face. You follow that? Their greatest fear is extinction. And extinction only comes from racial mixing. That is a progressive gene versus a regressive gene. And we can mix with any race of people for generations and still be more. No race can do that. So the total concentration is on how to keep us from becoming a nationality, nation, or race, but rather make us a color and a thing. So they made many names for us. Negro, Afro, Rastafarian, Hebrew Israelite, Black Muslim, Muslim, Sunni, Shia, Colored, Coon, Spade, Jigaboo, Horse Monkey, Yardy, Burnhead, Nigger. But they won't call you more. And they make you a thing so they don't have to classify you in legal documents or you may demand representation in their system as a whole. You may say, I'm entitled to, according to the Constitution, representation. I cannot be tried without a jury of my peers. And my peers would have to be my nationality in order to be my peers. So thus, they make you eliminate the name more, which is on document in the country, and have you call yourself everything but more, so you are not entitled to the rights that would link you back to the Almanac and give you back the Native American title lift you back to Sudan and Egypt and give you back your and lift you back to Samaria and Persia and give you back your true nationality. Because then you will be classified by record and deed and history and doctrine and Bible and Quran and Bagdavida as the ancient one. Mm -hmm. By that you mean the oldest one. You'll be the Akbar of the Allahu Akbar. <laughs> the oldest one. And they have in their documents that they are supposed to protect the ancient one and your ancient religion. We initiated them into them rights. And the symbol you see on this here, fair, see I have on my head, was the ancient symbol of the mystic war which we gave them under the five-pointed star, the third sun, the third sun at the end, because they were not there at the six-pointed star, which was the sun only. The first sun, they are not the end of them. When you call them and ask them to identify themselves by race or nationality, they cannot do it. They give you no power. And country. I'm a European of Frenchman. You say, but that's you mean you're from the punk? And then you say, and what do they consider? Where is their God? Where is their religion? Who is their God? What is their culture? Where is their poetry? Where is their art? Where is their sculpture? Where is their empire? Where is their gold? Where is their diamonds? Where is their battle? Where are they recorded? 
in mind as other than barbarians and women. Barber, barber. No, don't fall for that barber because you're not a barbarian, you're not a burma. Don't fall for another mistake. If you approach them and say, what are you by nationality and race? And they say, I'm English. You say, you mean Anglo and Saxon? <laughs> Where is their art? Poetry. Oh, well, Shakespeare. Shakespeare was a student of the school of Hermes. Chahut called Thoth of ancient Egypt as the Thoth was, who brought all of the doctrine here. You don't fool us, Khalil LeBron, the Persians were copying down Egyptian poets and passed it off as the Book of Prophets. He called us the Book of Prophets because they knew, he knew, that all the Muslims would oppose that. Classifying Muhammad of 1400 years ago as a final prophet for Hunter No Muslim would come near it unless they classified him as Sufi of the Muslim Salah, which is considered insane in this world. Those who have left the path of the real law and have went off and began heretics to make themselves one little rock, the Sufi. Well put together so that when we trace back to Arab and we say to him, who are you by race and nationality? He says, I am an Arab. And he said, show me Arab in the Torah. Show me Arab in the Indian. Show me Arab in the Gabor. He goes back to Jaktan, son of Mithraim, who also had a son, Kasluel, who became the father of Philistines, who became the Philistines. So those Palestinians over there are on your land. Jokhan was dark skinned with woolly hair. He was directly out of the same sea of Noah, called Up the Christian to us in the right record, called the Gilgamesh Epic, from which the Torah and the Quran and the Indian were plagiarized. And they were all dark skinned, woolly hair people. Not because I say they were, but because rock and fossils and carbon and documents, and sketches, and pictures, have proven they are. There is no such thing as an Arab, in the sense of them, we were Arabs, because when we began to Arab, to wander, and move away from the Persian Gulf, from one end of our land to the next, freely on our borders, and freely mixing amongst our own, because it was never a fear of a genetic in our nation, among black on black. Yeah. Only other people, they would come to us when they intended on migrating further south, kidnap our women, breed among us to sustain their existence beneath the sun by taking in our melanin. Of which, if they don't have, the sun will kill them. So the Arab has no nationality or culture. And when you ask him, he'll tell you, well, 1400 years ago, or that is in the year 570, what happened? A man was born in Arabia. And his name was Ahmed. He later became known as Muhammad. Or when he became trusted, El Amin. They called him Mustafa, Muhammad Al Amin. He was our prophet 1400 years ago. That's all. <laughs> 1400 years ago. That is no more than eight of your grandparents. And we have records by stone and carving in America. Head to the pocket up in America of us as all max, woolly hair, big lips, wide nose, black skin, as they call it, more, going back 900 years before Jesus, 
that 2,900 years of reign. And the Muslims are talking about 1,400 years and calling that a legacy in history. <laughs> and Muhammad met an angel. Let's think about that. Uh, Muhammad, the founder of Islam, encountered an angel who he referred to as Jibrael. Salam alaykum wa rahmatullah. They said. And this same Jibrael called a Malak or another angel is found in Judaism. Yet Muslims don't want to say that a Jewish angel met their prophet. Muhammad was not a Muslim when he did Romanic because he hadn't got his mom yet. So Muhammad was then a what? A Zabian. The Arabians were Zabians at the time. Their God, Allah, is a statue. His wife was Allah and he had two daughters. Of course they put in the Quran, don't say that Allah is a statue. Of course you can write that after. Don't say that there's a trinity. Of course you can write that 2,000 years after the trinity. Show me an Islamic document of those before it was, before the Catholics had a trinity. The Catholics already had a trinity. When the Quran made the statement, don't say Allah is a trinity. Otherwise they wouldn't have been able to make the statement. Muslim can't explain who the meets of Jesus. And there's no way to cry. You're not just about to be able to look that way. Try to get them in the conversation to explain. They can't do it. Oh, we're not pushing the wrong. How, well, how are you right? We don't need 1,400 games of this. So Muhammad, while meditating in a cave in Arabia, has a visit by what he calls the angel Gabriel. And he calls him to a new religion. Right? By the year 610, Muhammad is being introduced to religious literature that can be found in the Old and New Testament and Egyptian writings and Persian writings. Nothing new. Thus, we get birth to a new religion. Now, a problem comes in because of the name Gabriel. And the Quran makes mention of Muhammad being like Abraham. Something they said about Jesus. Being like Abraham. So it comes up, was Abraham a Muslim? It's safe for the Muslims to change his name from Abraham to Ibrahim. Graft him into their culture. Take the circumcision practice of Judaism called Brit Mila. And say because Abraham was a father of circumcision, his, his uh, religion is called Mila Ibrahim, Mithyus, Mithyus. Say that Abraham's father was an idol worshiper when in Torah clearly tells you that Abraham was an idol worshiper who even prostrated himself before the feet of the house. That would be a whole story about Abraham and Nimrod's encounter. And they were generations apart. And then they say, well, the Quran is right and the Torah is wrong. When you read the Torah, they get the Quran. Would you? I go on to Islam to the Muslim. The whole Muslim cannot identify, identify themselves as Arabs. The Saudi Arabians today are on our land, on our oil. We are the real Arabs. Asiatic black men are East Indian. Asiatics are Oriental. And then you have one more race of them. Caucus Asiatic. Deteriorating Asiatic. Asiatic. All the people from the side of the East cut where the sun comes. Now the side cut of the raven head people, black hair, where the sun is at. Yeah, up here is the set. But that's another one that made them say, showing they don't have any knowledge. And we didn't have none of that in our doctor. So as you walk around the world and you try to ask people about who they are, where they came from, what race, mm -hmm. you ask a Native American, what race are you from? He says, I'm an Indian. Are you from India? No, I mean, I'm a Native American. Well, what, what, what are you? He'll tell you to be 
Dr. Jimena, Tony, Jimena. Good. I, I hear the name. What's the meaning? Now that you get the meaning, I see the meaning identifies with something like a mid-pair, the nose being there. What are you? You are an Oriental. You are Chinese. In America, in our land. You follow that? When you mix with us, we allow you to maintain your culture, and we let you move south of us, and you set up a maxim. The game known as Mai, Zoroaster. And then when we no longer respected your culture, when they started worshiping white skin, red beard, God from the sky, like on the culture, we actually leave. And you got up, and you left, and went back, and settled in Japan. And they mixed with us, and in Korea, so they say, the mind just disappeared. <laughs> no, we say, get off our land. Because you it, regret the dragon worship, and demon worship, and blood sacrifices, and throwing women, throwing uh, virgins into volcanoes, and you got to go. <laughs> and we built the ship for them. And we knew when the tides came in that can take a ship straight on across without fail or oil. And they sailed on back home. And if you go over to the far east, you will find the Mayans and the Aztecs as dark skinned, almost curly haired Orientals. Today, they're still there. No mystery to us, mystery to you. Young brothers like Hakeem Bey, the Lord Science Temple, <laughs> and Jose Bay, Dr. Jose Bay, are all trying to get this message to I am wise enough to see it. I've done my own work with the government. Nation of Islam. My brothers, my sisters, do your homework and come on in and join the Moorish nation and get your nationality and your identity back. Barad was not one of us. He's not dark skin. He's not curly hair. He's not woolly hair. He in no way identified with us. So he did not be my God. How can you be a crack of his genetic and be a progress of genetic a genetic person God? Not that father. Dr. Collins should be my God. You understand? Stop playing around. We don't have enough time. Face it. The brothers from the Morris Science Temple on nationality is more on point than we were on this Islamic thing. Now all they got to do is give up that Islamic crap and go back to more of the fourth invasion of the barbers into Morocco. And come on back and identify with the Almat and how the Ethiopians were more and the Kenites were more, and the Persians were more, and that more in itself, Moreno, or Maracca, or Maracca, is no more than a description of in one of the languages that the Caucasians who are doing this recording call it. That's why we must identify with it. Because they wrote it down. And it's in the languages that we're now speaking today, and in the archives in the countries where we're dwelling today, and there we can receive information, prove our nationality back to more, and for more we can say Moreno is simply black, which is Nubian, or Sudanese, or Aswanese, or Mauritanian, Somalian. The Libyans don't belong there. That put another son from your team. Tunisians don't belong there. Algerians don't belong there. The light skin Moroccans, all of them, you can stay on our land, but admit that it's our land and that you push the real Moroccans south. That's all we have. We don't say get off the land, off our land. We're not like you. We can all live on the land in peace. But acknowledge that it's our land. Acknowledge that we walk alongside of dinosaurs and fingers, and you didn't in the days of Neanderthals. 
And then, so when you reach out your hands all of a sudden when they start talking at you, punch them right in the jeans. <laughs> Ask them right up front. You say you're a white man, a white supremacist. Just what race or what family do you come from? Are you Irish? Are you Polish? Are you Scottish? Are you Dutch? French? And then let, let us dwell on that point in your so-called nationality. Because you can't say the white race. There's no such thing as a white race. It's a mix of a whole lot of different people who don't get along. Don't worship the same God. Don't listen to the same music. Don't even drink the same kind of beer. More. We need more more. We need all the people. Start wearing them fences. Let me know that you found your way back home. When you see your Moorish brothers, greet them. Because we got something to be thankful for them. But when I got in contact with it and I started opening up and studying it, you know me. I ain't gonna shoot you no blank. I took it apart. I see them, I see them mistakes, but I see that they have more good than they have bad. And I'm smart enough to move my people where it's safe. And I wish Farrakhan and five percent of the other kids out there would look a little deeper into nationality and identity. We need to know that. All right, please.